Me have to say, big up to Mark Golden for that movie I make. Yo, the contest, no by election with Andrew Wallace and him clown them. No by election. A general election we want for call. A vote we want vote them out. We don't want a by election. So make Andrew Wallace and him administration alone run them by election. A general election we want you about. Call the general election now. Why is it announced by election? You know, she don't just announce the general election, man. Just like how you check the people in a COVID and call the general election before time. Do it again, no man. Do it now, no man. Where we are going with by election? We are not going to contest now by election. We want general election. So you and your administration can go with that. Fool on the tech people for Mark Golden not interested in that, brother. Only thing, think people, only thing think say Mark Golden should and contest no by election. Let me know down below in the comment section. Run them with Mark. Bread for seventy-five dollars. No, oh, how often something like this? Sometimes some people come on the money not enough to buy, so them just buy two slices of bread. They sell them two slices of bread for seventy-five dollars. No, oh, how often something like this happen? Not often, but people come and buy where their money can reach, mm -hmm. and suppose them have a little chain there and say, "Boy, I need bread for eat with the egg, you know." How much you two slices of bread, Jella? I said, give me $75, so, yeah. How much one egg? One egg, $60. So that's a breakfast right there? Yeah, that's a breakfast. Egg and bread, yeah. Can your basket where you can't reach it. <laughs> <laughs> I used to be here once, but not again. So while the government is here seeking a by-election with the opposition leader, Mark Golden, people are out there suffering. People are out there buying two slices of bread. For seventy dollar, when this man say oh, a bread was like for a hundred and fifty dollar, two hundred dollar, and three hundred dollar. Now you cannot buy a bread anymore. A bread right now is for like eight, nine, ten hundred dollar. Bread is up to a thousand dollar right now. You cannot even buy a bread again. And this man is out there seeking a by election. Now I don't wrong the opposition leader not to accept a by election with the government. I don't wrong him because at the end of the day, what we really need at this given moment, the Jamaican people them need a general election. They need a change. And me personally, don't wrong Mark Golden to reject a by-election. What do you think, people? Let me know down below in the comment section if you think Mark Golden made the right decision by rejecting a by-election. I want to look into this. It's been a year now since um, so Southern Chilani is without an MP because, because Miss Di Rumpel resigned from them time there until now. And I'm still not filling that vacancy. Over there in Marant Bay the same thing. But the government is in a rush to fill this vacancy. And I don't wrong Mark Golden from making his decision. decision. Now, when you look into things, you know, people, people are saying say where there is prosperity, but can there be prosperity when two slices of bread is for $70? Two slices of bread, two slices of bread is for $70. So if you want a breakfast, it will cost you $100, almost $200, just for an egg and two slices of bread. That can't feed your family. There is no way at all two slices of bread and a egg can feed your family. I mean, I don't talk about buying a tea bag as yet. Which a tea bag is for maybe $50. So how is that going to feed your family? While these people are out there enriching themselves. They care zero about the poor. And that's why we have to stick together, rise together, stand up together and ensure that these people... Stop cheating us like we are garbage. Bless up to my viewers and my subscribers. I hope everybody having a blessed and a wonderful day. Now, my viewers and my subscribers, remember, in everything you do, always put God first. In every or any situation, just always remember to call upon God. Always remember to pray because a prayer day keep the devil away. My viewers and my subscribers, we soon forward. A corrupt government cannot liberate the people. If the head of the stream is corrupt, the entire river will be also.
I do not support corruption. Corruption takes money away from children's education. It deprives hospitals of basic necessities. It means that roads are not fixed. Corruption deepens inequality. It siphons off taxpayers' money to make a few cronies richer with the political connections instead of benefiting the people. This government has been doing everything it can to weaken and undermine the Integrity Commission, which is an institution that I designed as Minister of Justice and brought the legislation to Parliament to fight corruption in this country. I have said it before and I will tell you again, Jamaica cannot move forward without a government built on integrity that embraces principles of good governance in this country. So welcome back to my viewers and my subscribers. Big up to all of my viewers, big up to all of my subscribers. We continually support the channel and I help the channel to grow. Now, remember to leave a like on this video. Remember to give this video a thumbs up. Also, if you're a new viewer's first time on my channel, then please subscribe to my channel and turn on the post notification bell so whenever we drop new content, you will be first to be notified. Share the content with a friend, a family, a loved one. Share it on your social media platform. And my viewers and subscribers, we are almost at 100k subscribers. So if you're not subscribed yet, now is the right time for you to subscribe. Subscribe, turn on the post notification bell. So whenever we drop new content, you will be first to be notified. All right. Now, people, let us start off the report with this. Since Marsha Smith resigned over there in Nati Senton, it has caused a big problem in the social media space. Because the Prime Minister wants to do a by-election over there in Northeast Senton, but afraid to do a by-election over there in Southern Chilani and over there in the Maran Bay Division in St. Damas. Now, the People's National Party are saying to the Prime Minister, they are not going to contest any by-election over there in St. while people are saying that. And the PNP, they say, time come. So, people, what's your thought? The roles have been reversed, according to former Senator Matthew Samuda, who is contesting the by-election for Northeast St. Anne on a Jamaica Labour Party JLP ticket. A campaign manager to members of parliament for years, Mr. Samuda is now an aspirant. Nothing is ever um, guaranteed in life. But what I will say to you is um, I expect to carry um, Shiny Robinson's legacy onto victory and will work very hard to achieve that. Mr. Samuda has been tapped by the JLP to take over from Marsha Smith. Ms. Smith resigned as MP on Tuesday. Samuda, he resigned as Senator and also Minister without portfolio in the Ministry of Economic Growth and Job Creation. As to whether he's been tapped for another specific position in the Cabinet, he declined to comment. My primary focus is simply ensuring that the Jamaica Labour Party is returned at the end of the by-election and then after that I will see where and how and if the Prime Minister wants me to serve in any capacity I'll make myself available. Matthew Samuda has been canvassing in Northeast St. Anne for at least a year. During an interview at the JLP headquarters he says his team is ready. We've been politically organizing and resetting the seat to be ready for a general election um, but we are ready for any election and i believe um results will prove that northeast saint anne is traditionally a jlp safe seat the late shahini robinson was mp since 2001 she died in 2020. mr samuda says his aim is to get at least 10,000 voters on election day the jlp received 9169 votes to the pnp's 4747 in the 2020 general election over 41,000 voters were registered in the constituency at the time. Though it's a constituency-wide assessment, you want to win all four divisions comfortably so that there is a level of dominance in the constituency. As to how he plans to do it, 
Well, Mr. Samuda says the untapped synergy between the parish's natural resources and the economy are among some of the top campaigning issues. Priory, Senans Bay, Draxall, Ocho Rios, exchange with White River, etc. If you look at the natural assets of that space, it has more potential than anywhere I can think of in the Caribbean. Um, but its people need to feel that benefit. Its people need um, to see that their government is connecting the dots for them to realize their own hopes and dreams. BNP accused government of using state resources to play politics. People's National Party General Secretary Dr. Dayton Campbell is accusing Prime Minister Andrew Owens of using state resources to play politics. Dr. Campbell says the PNP will not file a candidate in any parliamentary by-election with the party instead focus on the general election constitutionally due next year. What is unwise is for government to cause a minister of government and a senator to resign to go and take up a seat. That person is already in the cabinet, they're already in the parliament. That person is resigned to go and take up a seat. And uh, the member of parliament that has resigned, the prime minister is saying that he's going to appoint her somewhere else. Obviously, they have made some arrangement that is rewarding her. And then for the very next day to call that by-election whilst leaving a seat that has been unrepresented for more than a year, still not having a date for their election. That clearly is political maneuvering and using the resources of the state for the benefit of the party. That is not a process that we want to be party to and complicit in. What we are doing is to get ready for the general election. If the prime minister thinks that we are afraid to contest, then he should call the general election and we'll meet him at the polls. We have a plan as to how we want to get to where we want to go. We've charted a course that is evidence-based, data-driven, and we do not believe that the Labour Party in trying to rescue their failing fortunes but because clearly they're not delivering. In doing that, we do not think that that should come at the expense of the public that is already burdened and already finding it hard to survive. We know what we need to get done, so we have a particular process to get our party ready that does not require us spending $25 million of taxpayers' money when people can hardly buy a pound of tomato or cabbage or sweet pepper, when people are admitted and are still on the floor in hospitals and when schools have reopened and some students are in church hall because there's still no roof on their school. We don't think that is the best spend of the limited resources for a government that is trying to be frugal. <laughs> so it's been two months now since burial blow and the hurricane money is still there in the government pocket. It's still not hand over the money that were, what, that were given to assist the people that were affected by hurricane burial. But this man is seeking a by-election Jamaican people need to stand up for this country, you know, because it look like them love politics more than themselves. It look like them can't eat politics. It look like them can't sleep under politics. And these government officials are not doing anything at all for them. Them not do nothing for them. But yet still, missing enough people are jump up. Yes, by election, Mark Golden afraid. Mark Golden afraid. Mark Golden look out for the people them. Assist the people them before you talk about by election. Are you just call a general election? Make we just get rid of you once and for all. Because you are being evilful to the people. You make it look like you are one of the biggest monsters in the world. Controlling freak. Such a dictator man. With a dictatorship. Come on man. We don't want to buy election. We want the people. In, the people in that were affected by hurricane burial. To get assistance from the government. Because the government get the money to assist those people. And nobody now get no assistance from the government after what happened in Hurricane Beryl. But the JLP put out back a statement. And this is what they said. Nonsense. Fitz only refused PNP state's resource for a politics claim. Object nonsense. That's how parliamentary secretary in the office of the Prime Minister, Senator Fitz Ensley, has described the claim from the People's National Party that the Prime Minister is using state resources to pursue partisan political objectives. Prime Minister Andrew Holness announced on Wednesday that the Northeast St. Anne by-election is scheduled to take place on September 30. Nomination day is for September 11. Reacting to the announcement, Dr. Campbell wrote on the social media platform X 
The PM has shown his hand in trying to use the GOJ and state resources to play politics. But Senator Fitzhenley has rejected that argument. Concerning changes made to the administration and the announcement of a by-election today, I've heard the argument from the opposition suggesting abuse of process. That's abject nonsense. Abject nonsense. The fact of the matter is that the Constitution of Jamaica affords the Prime Minister the privilege of announcing a by-election at a time of his choosing. And there are certain guardrails in place which have been observed. P current Prime Minister is not the first to have exercised that power. It has indeed been exercised by Prime Ministers in the past, including members of the PNP. The PNP General Secretary is also quoted in the print media as saying his party will not assist the government in an abuse of the process by participating in a by-election. Opposition leader Mark Golding has also declared that the party would not contest any parliamentary by-elections before the next general elections. According to Mr. Golding, the government's decision to call a by-election so close to an anticipated general election is a slap in the face to the electorate. Senator Fitzhenley is scoffing at that position taken by the PNP. These guys in the opposition have been going up and down the country talking about time come. And now a by-election has been called. And you hear them making all sorts of excuses why they will not face the people. It's indicative of a political party, the PNP, that is bankrupt of ideas. And they understand that they have so wronged the Jamaican people in the past that it's unlikely that they retain the confidence of the electorate. That's why you hear them making all these excuses. Can you imagine how their candidate in North East St. Anfields has been up and down the constituency making a nuisance of himself, in my view, and now the opportunity comes and his party has declined to back him. Can't be a good feeling. Senator Fitzhenry says there is important context to recent changes made to the Wholeness Administration and changes which are to come. He says having achieved economic stability in a sustainable way, the government has pivoted focus towards bolstering personnel at various levels as it intensifies a push towards accelerating economic growth. Despite very trying circumstances, including the war in Europe and the COVID-19 pandemic, the economy is on a very stable footing. The administration recognizes that the next goal is to accelerate the pace at which the economy expands. And invariably, this will include a shift in HR personnel. And that's why you hear the Prime Minister indicating that there will be changes at the cabinet level, at the various levels of the government, including board chairmen, permanent secretaries, advisors, to secure the best outcomes and critically to ensure that we continue along a path and accelerate, in fact, the journey towards easing the burdens facing sections of the Jamaican population. Now, if it's early, or whatsoever you call yourself, when the people of Jamaica say time come, we no mean say time come, for a by-election because that now going to make no changes. We don't mean say time come for a by-election because that won't make any changes. We don't just need help for put Matthew Samuda in an office so or put him in a seat so they can choose him as a finance minister. We don't need that in Jamaica. Yeah. So here we want to do. If we don't really want an election, call it general election so the people out there can choose who them really want to represent them. Because you know make no sense right now. Which part from PNP are back out after them say time come. The man just simply say he will not contest that by election. Because there is vacancy over there in southern Chilani. That haven't been filled since the resignation letter from Miss Di Rumpel. So why would you want to contest a by election over there in Centon. When one still no run up a center as yet. So what you say right now, nah, make no, it now nah, make no sense to we. What you say now, it now nah, make no sense to we. Cost of living is too high. Right now, the government are pressure poor people. And we tired. And we, the people of Jamaica, say time come. And I'm not going in. And we, the people, say time come. And we can't wait for voting out. So the best thing we want to do right now is call a general election. So we can go down at the polling station and vote on out. Because I mean, I could have voted about 50,000 times. Because we have to get rid of it. Or is that destruction to Jamaica? Or not mash up the country? Or not mash up the country, brother? So it is not Mark Golden who has a time come. And we, the people of Jamaica, has a time come. Let me know what you thought down below in the comment section, my viewers and my subscribers. Or not if it's a time come now. Time come for your change. We tell them. Alright? Leave a like on this video and subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. Now, people, the long waiting for the Prime Minister. Statutory decoration is asset is over. 
Now people check this. PM declaration form part of Integrity Commission special report to Parliament. So the long wait is now over, people. So it is understand that a special investigation report submit to the House of Representatives this morning is in relation to Prime Minister Andrew Wallace and certified statutory declaration. So after three years of waiting, it is finally here. I wonder what my mama go say now. I wonder if she go table the Prime Minister report or she go send it back to the Integrity Commission. And then again, I wonder if the Prime Minister buy out the Integrity Commission. But after three years, we want to know why it could not be certified. Prime Minister Holdis' statutory declarations have remained uncertified by the Integrity Commission since 2021. This has sparked relentless attacks by the opposition People's National Party on the Prime Minister. Opposition leader Mark Golding has repeatedly seized the opportunity to question the integrity of the Prime Minister due to the lack of certification. Throughout this period, the country's anti-corruption watchdog has been deafeningly silent on the matter. However, the Commission partially lifted its silence earlier this year with its annual report. It revealed that it was nearing the completion of the certification process for the Prime Minister's declarations. Today, the Integrity Commission disclosed that it has submitted to Parliament a report of investigation, an associated indicative ruling, and the full ruling from its Director of Corruption Prosecution. Additionally, a special report under Section 36.3 of the Integrity Commission Act, highlighting matters of urgent parliamentary interest, has also been submitted to the Parliament. Section 36.3 of the Act allows the Commission to present a report on any issue deemed deserving of special parliamentary attention. The Commission confirmed that these documents were officially received and signed for at Parliament at 11.42 Thursday morning. Hard copies of the investigation report were delivered in separate envelopes with identical letters addressed to Speaker of the House, Juliet Holness, Senate President, Tom Tavares Finson, and Clerk to the Houses of Parliament, Colleen Lowe. Notably, the reports were also sent to Deputy Speaker of the House, Heroy Clark. Submitting a copy to the Deputy Speaker is rare. The only other instance was in the case involving former House Speaker Marissa Dalrymple-Filbert. In September 2023, the Integrity Commission's Director of Investigations, Kevon Stevenson, referred Mrs. Dalrymple-Filbert to the Director of Corruption Prosecution for allegedly making false statements related to a vehicle purchased in 2015 that was not included in her statutory declarations for 2015 to 2021. Mrs. Dalrymple Filbert has denied any wrongdoing, attributing the omission to a genuine error. With Parliament set to resume on September 17, the nation may be mere days away from hearing the findings of the IC about why it has not certified the Prime Minister's declarations. So as one of my viewers and my subscribers, the Prime Minister's statutory declaration is already... It is now ready, people. So the long waiting is over. You understand what I say? No. We all knew what is going on. So them better try not come to us with no nonsense. Them better try not come to us with no nonsense. And the Integrity Commission, if we don't want to lose on integrity, come and lie to the Jamaican people. Them. Make no false report for pretty up nothing for the Prime Minister. Because it must be a problem. Why the Prime Minister's statutory declaration could not be certified for the past three years. So, Uno can't come to me with no Anansi story. So, we are make sure so we want Uno friend now because the Jamaican people will not have it. We will not settle for no bull crap. So, make we tell Uno that friend now. But, people, see your thought down below in the comment section. Want to think the IC finally released. The Prime Minister statutory declaration. So it is now to table in Parliament. And them can't hide it this time around because at the end of the day, it done out there already. Say the Integrity Commission tabled the report. And it is for the Prime Minister. Only two reports came out, and one of them is for the Prime Minister. So them can't trick with this time, people. Them cannot trick us. This time. Now I'm going to leave you with this video where this person is talking about the Jamaican healthcare system 
and how it is, it is the worst system. It is the worst healthcare system. And it is here in Jamaica. While these people are there bragging that they are making progress and prosperity and all of that. So people check out this video and remember to like up the video. Good morning. This morning me want to talk to you about the Jamaican healthcare system. Them have a free healthcare system for the Jamaican people and residents. But the system broke. It broke. Just like the system of Canada have problem too. But this Jamaica system, boy, one whole year, a whole year, my husband have a hernia. And him get the hernia from all of the stress we went through with the gunmen. And then people, them are folly who try to kill we, you know. Them threaten we, them chief all we things them. Oh man, them run we out of the place that we renovate. Me tell you that story. That's how me start the TikTok anyway. And him develop a hernia from that stress. So a whole year, him I go up to the hospital, go see the doctor. And you, you go at eight o'clock in the morning and you wait all day long, maybe five, six o'clock at night. The doctor see you. And them give you more tests for do. And them, all the doctor, them own them their place where you go have to pay for them tests there. Like the PSA prostate test. And him have to do that test three times. Like them lose the results. Them not, it just, it mash up man. It no fear. And it no work. And me just feel very, very sad for the working class Jamaicans because when it, when am ever going to get the operation? You know, the doctor, she wants to send him to Kingston to get MRI. And the MRI machine broke for months and months and months now. The MRI machine broke. Then she wants him to go Ocherios to get a colonoscopy. A 90000 for that. 90000 For what? The man have a hernia problem. It's a simple operation. That's all. But them just want to get into all them thing about um yes in prostate enlarged but most men over 40 have that problem and there's herbal natural things you can do for that which him i do and it to help him but she want to go now do mri which means them gonna want to do next thing them want to do a biopsy you know it's in very invasive right and if you have cancer in your prostate me son is a doctor in canada and him tell me say that Yep, you got to die of something different before you die of prostate cancer. In in most situations, me not trying to get into no quarrel with nobody about this. Me is not a doctor. Me just to tell you what I'm saying. And him say them not even use that test in Canada anymore, the PSA test. And even if them get them results, them leave, left it. Them just love them, man. So now, we all go to the private surgeon. And me grateful them have a surgeon in a Port Antonio, Dr. Ken Williams. We go see him a year ago, you know, because we get the referral from Dr. Uh, Tanzen, the German doctor. He's a FME doctor that and Wayne doctor. Him is a retired, um, well, him is still practicing medicine, but him is a German doctor. Him used to work in the ER in a Germany. And him know right away when him see you, him know exactly what wrong with you. Me walk in there one time, a limp in there and say something wrong with me heel. And right away him tell me, say, a eel spur. And me say, no, because me never want that for true, but a true. And you know what? Him give me, him say, all right, go on to the hospital and get, get a x-ray. But me, me, I tell you, say a heel spur. And so me go get the x-ray and a true. I want to say the truth. So him give me one blasted, rotted injection in me foot. It hurt like hell. But up to now, not a three, four years ago, me never have no pain again. So him really know him ting. Anyway, him send we to the surgeon a year ago. And him tell we say, all right, you know, him do the thing, uh, an auto bay and how much costs and all that. And me think, say, well, you know, make me, make me try the public system first. But boy, true, we go through so much of folly and we lose so much. We just, 
lose so much because of those teeth and people up there. Them know who them is. Them know and them karma bad man. One of them might be dead by now. Me don't know the 91 year old or however old. No, 85 year old. Imagine you're 85 year old and you come down from Canada. Leave your nice house and family and come down to Jamaica to threaten and terrorize people. Hard working, innocent people. Wow. Anyway, so... We are going to do the surgery. Am I going to do the surgery next Thursday in Anato Bay? And me so grateful. And yes, a whole heap of money. But you know what? What is life without health, right? Without your health. So, me just uh, fill you in on Wagwan. All right. Respect. Pick up yourself. Blessed love. One love. Peace. We also want to make the government accountable to the people of Jamaica in the parliament. That is why I brought the impeachment bill to parliament. So then when a politician violates the sacred trust of the people, he or she will be held accountable. We want to deepen the democracy. We want to make the elected people more accountable to those they represent. We must introduce a recall mechanism for non-performing elected representatives as other parties and countries have done around the world.